Hello, my name is Kyle with the Native Transplants in Austin, Texas. In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at a comparison between the simple synthesizer used in the uh, Berklee School of Music uh, production class and a synthesizer of my choosing. In previous tutorials, I used a Korg Monotron analog ribbon synthesizer. One would wonder at first glance why even bother using a synthesizer that appears to be a toy. This is definitely more than a toy. Some of the reasons. Uh, it's analog, pure analog synth synthesizer, not analog modeling. Um, it's got knobs. If you like to tweak knobs, that's good. Uh, it actually creates a really fat sound. I think one of the greatest advantages of this is that its filter, the voltage controlled filter, is the same as that on the famous Korg MS-20 from the 1970s. But most importantly, in the 21st century, I can take that same technology and put it in my pocket. And it costs somewhere between $40 and $50. Now, this isn't easy to interface with a computer right out of the box, and it's not very playable. If we look at the ribbon synthesizer, not very easy. So what we'll do is take a look at what you can do to modify this so that you can interface it with your DAW, and then we'll look at its uh, a comparison of features between the simple synth you've seen in our lectures and this one. In order to interface the Korg Monotron to a computer, you need to create a MIDI interface. This is a device that uh, I found uh, the parts for at a place called beatnik.jp. That's spelled with a C. Some of the things that the Simple Synthesizer and the Monotron have in common is that they're both uh, single oscillator monophonic. Um, one of the differences with the Monotron is that the oscillator has only a sawtooth wave. And same with the LFO. You can only choose sawtooth where uh, with the Simple Synth uh, Loudon's you can use sine, triangle, saw, square, noise for both the oscillator and the, and the LFO. Also a major factor is that the Monotron has no amplitude envelope. There is no attack, decay, sustain, release at all. In fact, the only way you can control amplitude is with the volume knob. So what makes up for that is it's rather impressive filter and the fact that it's got a really good sound. Now this is an analog, that's another difference, is that this actually needs to be tuned. I often tune it with uh, just a standard tuner. And then I can make a sound with it. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate how you can uh, change the cutoff and the peak. So hit the sound. So you can see that uh, it's very easy. These two knobs are the cutoff and peak and they have relationship to each other. Also the LFO, the rate is determined indicated by the uh, blinking LED. That's the LFO rate. Remember, this is a sawtooth. Now I can do two things with that. I can change what it affects. I can have it affects the pitch of the oscillator or I can have it affect the cutoff. So, and then I can also determine its intensity. So if we leave it at this set rate and I'm gonna change the pitch of the oscillator, what I'll do is I'll play a note and then I'll bring in the intensity with which the LFO affects the oscillator, and you'll see the difference. So I can also have it affect the cutoff, which is what I prefer to do much more often. So, why would you do this? Uh, DIY, um, lo-fi, analog, um, making do, making more with less. These are all some of the reasons why you would choose this. 
the beauty is that once you uh, modify this so that you can interface with a the computer, then you can use your DAW to create some great sounds.